<laughs> don't know if he's a yeah don't know if he's a puppy dog or a little steer or a bull they're so funny get them all wound up that little <laughs> that little baby 16 they just get going so fast they'll dart they're so cute well hello there how are you guys doing today? Um, parts came in for the transmission. So uh, we're done with the cab for a while. Got to get this transmission together. So we got the counter shaft in. You got to put the counter shaft in before anything else. So we got the dial indicator set up. So if I push, I'm at 69, <laughs> 71. Let's keep it clean. 71 to zero is 29 thousandths. And uh, so I have to, I want to end up somewhere between one to three thousandths end play. And then what we're going to do is uh, put the bottom shaft in with no gears. And you do the same thing. You add a bunch of shims to create end play. The bottom shaft and the differential, we want um, uh, two to four thousandths uh, negative end play or crush or preload. So if the bottom shaft, we add a bunch of shims to it and it ends up at ten thousandths end play, we would take away 13 thousandths worth of shims. Same thing on the differential, same theory there. On the differential, when you're doing them, keep the stock shim pack on this side. Add shims to this side, because um, we'll measure backlash later. And on the bottom shaft, I got the new cup in and greased up, but the shim pack, whatever shim pack came behind that bearing hub, that's what you put back in. You change shims at this end to set tolerance and this side to set tolerance because we don't want to change the position of that pinion shaft and we don't want to change position of that ring gear uh, that relationship has already been set so we want to maintain that after we get everything in then we'll check backlash and move shims from side to side um, so there we go uh, bearing removal uh, if you don't have to cut a bearing, great. Um, if you can just heat it and pound it off of there, that's the best. If you do have to cut a bearing, you want to move as quickly as you can because how you're going to cut that shaft uh, is if you're taking too long and you start to transfer heat to that shaft. Remember, the torch can't cut cold metal. Um, so you cut as quick as you can. Um, a lot of times, if you, you know... I don't know, each bearing fits so different. There is no standard rule of thumb. Um, so if you do have to torch a bearing, torch as fast as you can so you don't get any heat to the shaft or minimal heat. Um, and then just shave away. Even if you leave a thin coat, it might be enough that you can drive the bearing off um, or finish off with a cold chisel, whatever. Um, maybe we'll just do a different video on bearings altogether. And then installing bearings, um, I've got my crock pot cooking, and uh, so this is the end bearing for the uh, for the, the that pinion shaft. So he's gooten hot, um, and that works good. It's cooking that bearing in hot oil works fantastic. Um, I like that. How dad taught me to do it was you took a plate of steel, you got that bearing coated in oil, you take a plate of steel and you heat from under the steel and heat inside the bearing and under the steel and inside the bearing because you got that thick edge and thin edge. So you keep focusing on that thick edge. And then if the bearing starts to steam, then you know you're getting that 300, 350 degree range and it's good to pop on. Um, getting them in 350 degree oil works flawless. I could just put them in there and it can just sit there and wait for me to use it. And it works really, really good. Um, so yeah, so we got 29 thousandths. Let me do my math. I'll get back to you after this is set and we'll start putting that bottom shaft together. That went pretty good. I had a 17 and a 10 for shim in there. So I took out 27. That gives me one to two thousandths end play. Perfect, that's where we need to be. Got the special tool, so you get a dummy shaft. So it's got the splines just like here. It just doesn't have the snap ring grooves because that's our problem is them snap rings. 
And uh, so we'll put the snap ring spacers in there and we'll use that dummy shaft because then it's just, you know, you're cleaning, cleaning and, and lubing and stuff as you're installing. But I mean, at 15, 20 minutes, you've got that bottom shaft together. Then you slide that sucker through, boom, in an hour, you, you've, you've got it together and you are relaxed, easy going. Um, so the, the first thing we're going to do is get a range gear and get him C clamped up here. And then, uh, then we'll start assembling this bottom shaft. You can do it. So, so dad started doing these before that bottom shaft tool came out. And so, um, that's how I was, that's how he told me to do them. Um, is a little speck of dirt got in there. Your turkey. Um, is that you you start that shaft and and what i would do is i've got these straps around here to support hold the shaft up otherwise you take blocks of wood and build a bench there and just get ac clamped here c gear clamped here and then you bring the shaft get your snap ring then d uh, it'd be a you'd be a it'd be a snap ring your shift collar a snap ring then d and you just build the shaft and you keep bringing the shaft forward as you go. And then you got to keep working the snap rings back as you go. And the snap rings are thick and thin. So the, this big snap ring can't fall into that groove kind of deal. And, and it, it's doable. It just takes patience and time. Um, where with the dummy tool, you'll see it just, it's, it's easy peasy. And, uh, the nice thing is, is you can just slow down and do a good job. Here you got the tool to hold the snap ring open. Well, that's what it looks like. So you got the wire hooked to each tool holding the snap ring open. The dummy shaft is, is in place. And uh, so that's what it looks like. I, I guess there isn't no sense in, in taking video of each gear as I go. Like I said, you just reach through here with a C-clamp and uh, hold that gear in place and then just start as you bring the shaft through the front, you just start building the shaft. And I just take a picture of the parts page on, on jdparts.com, put it on my phone so I get the orientation right, you know, snap ring, then thrust washer. And then in here you got thrust washer, snap ring, thrust washer. And you can see the gears sometimes if you're in questioning, the gears will have a recess. If they got a notch inside the splines, then you know that that goes against a, a snap ring because it goes over the snap ring once the snap ring falls in the groove of the shaft. Um, so then the next thing we would do is uh, take that guy and this machined end fits in the end of the dummy shaft. And so we'll, we can put that in and and then you just kind of push and wiggle and push and wiggle and it it goes every once in a while you know the thrust washers just you know you're you're lined up with these splines but every once in a while you still get one you still got to twist and wiggle and twist and wiggle and it comes through and uh yeah so that's that so I'm, I'm gonna heave him up into there and let's see if we can't get it in that's what it looks like to get started so you can kind of see this is a really great picture so snap and groove each of the snap ring grooves. And so it, you can kind of see how the gears are sitting here. So if you're putting this together, building it together, you got the shape of the cast here and the casting here, they really bulge out. So the gear is over, you got casting, you know, up into the gear a little bit. So that's why you have to get this gear and this gear. If you, if you don't have the special tool, you have to get them two gears clamped to each end. And then you bring him on but this is where the fight is because you're way up here so then you slide the next gear on then you got to take this snap ring and drag it on and then get the next either thrust washer or shift collar gear whatever on and then wiggle the shaft forward then slide everything back then bring the shaft till you get the next thing on and then do it all over again and so that's where it's really time consuming and when you got these C clamped to the edge, you can't get too tight because they start to get crooked on you. Um, but you want them tight enough so they're not falling down. And then when you get to this end up here, you're really fighting to get. Um, so when you bring in 
this call or you're really it's it's kind of tough um it's really a pain in the butt uh in fact in fact this caller i think uh, i would get engaged on a c gear before i bring in b gear and then get b gear in place so then you're just fighting this little gap to get this last snap ring in um, that's how i do it if i didn't have the dummy tool or these tools to hold um that open and so technically we can we can start pushing and then at some point it's gonna there we go we lock up and we spline and uh, there we we're home just like that just like that in all honesty um it takes longer to grab a gear, clean it, lube it, and bring it in, you know. If I didn't have breaks of doing other stuff, it, it, it goes so nice with the dummy tool. So nice. And uh, so, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, I see any county special thanks to I see any for letting us rent rent that tool and uh i think we can't get it through john deere anymore i don't think so i might just take it to a local machine shop or wait till i get my lathe running and then i'll have to make one but uh yeah anyhow so the bottom shaft is in so we get rid of our tool and uh and then uh <clears throat> i got my bearing heater here and uh, just hydraulic oil and and uh, heat that thing up to 350 degrees. And I got our shim stack measured out to get our couple thousandths of crush. And uh, smack this end together. And then we can start working on the top shaft. All right. So I got the bearing just started. Um, that's going to cool on me a little bit. Coming out of the hot oil, you'd be amazed how nice that is because uh, it, it makes it starting so much easier. And then uh, taps. You're not driving it on. You're tapping it to make sure you get started square. So now we'll uh, start pulling, pulling these plates out quick. And then... Uh, um get that bearing get that bearing finish driving that on and uh, make sure you got a good wire knot on that thing because you're yanking pretty dang hard on that and so where'd you go you little booger and uh Let me pause you so I get that out. I grab the, the pry bar to get me a little space. And now we can just. So now you hear it's kind of rattly. So then I'll get some bolts and uh, use the cover plate and finish pulling that on so we're not pounding against too much stuff. Um, I might be able to gain a, a few inches, you know, I guess I can go like that, but I can't with the camera. Oop. So, yeah, I'll get back. All right, so that sucked in pretty good. Now we got to get it torqued up. So I'm going to cover these bolts in Loctite, but the problem is when you go to tighten the bolts, it's going to spin on you. <clears throat> so we'll put it in park. Uh, park on these is C and a i guess technically any any two gears so now we're in park so now it it's locked up so i'll pull these bolts out get locked tight on them and we'll go to 50 pounds or 55 pound feet i'll look in the book for the double double check my spec <clears throat> 50 pound feet of torque tighten them up and then that bottom shaft is done and then we'll get shifting in and confirm that everything is 
shifting as should be in so so got everything loctited and torqued up then uh smack it after you get it torqued up smack it with a hammer not this one be very gentle bringing this one in bring it in slow easy rubber hammer tap and and bring it square you'll break this housing really easy if you're not careful this one you get it torqued up give it a smack and retorque it to make sure everything's set um so all i do is these these shift forks i got them up here get this this cam on it i i because i that's just what i i usually kind of get it in that position and just kind of roll it down in there and uh it's not not that bad <clears throat> so here you got a d b and c so we're in park right now because a and c are locked in so the, the first click when you come out of park is a there we go we, we left c so now we're in a the next one this one's just going to come up here and this one's going to draw in for b just like that so now we're in B, everything's good engagement. <clears throat> this one's just kind of floating. After B, we're gonna go to C. Might have to wiggle a little bit. Yep, there's our C, and we got the detent spring in, and I got a good solid detent. Um, you can see with my left hand, you're, you're, you're giving us some movement. There, we're back into toe. Between C and D is where our toe position is. That puts that bottom shaft in neutral and does not burn out our top shaft. And the next one should be D right there. Good solid detent. Our detent's good. I can zoom out. Our detent is good. And uh, so if I come here, there's back to toe and D. So everything looks really good shifting here. Um, there is a timing mark on the end of the shaft. There's a little V stamped on the end of the shaft and there's a timing mark stamped on here. Um, we'll come over to this other one. You can see the timing mark there and the timing mark is there. It's a good V. We flip it over. We got a good bridge between the detent holes and uh, that's what we want. And our detent ball is in good shape. If we've got a solid detent piece, Make sure that tip is in good shape and that these rollers are in good shape. There we go. So that's the bottom shaft. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot of work. Um, use the parts book. You, well, use your service tech manual. You're not doing this without a service manual because you need specifications and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so there you go. The bottom shaft is in. We're ready to, ready to rock, ready to rock. So now we'll start working on top shaft.